So that siege documents this particular time period. And not only was it seen in the UFO was seen in the Hudson Valley, but it was also seen over in Connecticut. And uh, I've actually seen this UFO three times. And UFO researchers do not necessarily see the UFOs they're investigating. But well, how could you not? It's all over the place. I got this research team together. We're going out and, and you know interviewing witnesses. You would think that sooner or later we were going to collide with it. Yes, it happened. And the first time when I was on in Austin on Route 98, 1 30 in the morning coming back, with a fellow investigator, the object appeared, the lights appeared, the lights turned on their side, rolled like a ferris wheel across the sky. It was amazing. I just stood there like, and we just stood there, couldn't believe it. it was our first UFO sighting. The second time I saw this is that it was in prime time. I was actually doing a show on UFOs at the University of Bridgeport about these sightings in 1984. And as I finished the show, I walk out to the parking lot. There's the object in the sky. I said, no, it can't be. I was fellow researcher of mine, investigator, and the entire area of Bridgeport, Bristol, Fairfield, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of witnesses saw this object that I, including officers from Fairfield, Bridgeport, Bristol, I mean, you know, it was just a mess. So, and I was convinced that somebody was playing some type of cosmic joke on me at that time. What are the chances of that happening? The third time, was in 1985, and um, we decided to go out and do some research. And we're driving on 84, we have three cars, and we're in contact by radio. And um, we come up to 84, where the Taconic is, and all of a sudden these lights come over the hill. And I'm radioing back and going, can't believe it, here they are, they're overhead, they're coming your way. And the fellow, another investigator behind me radioed back and said, what are you talking about? I don't see anything. I don't see anything. And then he saw, he sees a plane going over. He says, what is it, so crack it up or something? And then all of a sudden, his radio went silent. And he goes, I see it. I see it. It's enormous. It's passing over. And he's looking at the binoculars. He saw the structure. And by then, I saw it from the rear. It looked like a Christmas tree with all the red, green, and yellow, and amber lights. And, and so on. And I went over to Danbury and then went back to Newburgh and you know people were reporting it. Cars and trucks were pulling over 84 and people were getting out. Very spectacular. And one of the things I want to say is that this, there are many people involved with UFO research and to them it's like a game. Okay? You read it, it's interesting, but you don't really think too much about it. It's not until you have an experience that you realize that this stuff is very real and the reality of the phenomenon. Okay? And I'm not going to say to you that I know what UFOs are. I mean, I don't. That's what the U, UFO stands for. Unidentified. So, when Night Siege was finished, and, you know, it made its run, it's still in print. I mean, um, we have all of these cases that um, involved contact, that were kept out of the material at Dr. Heinrich's request. Probably because it wouldn't fit in the book anyway, because these are all ordinary UFO sightings. So, 